Okay, shall we try this the third time? <laughs> I tried um, recording this already twice and I messed up, I guess because it's been a while since I recorded. Um, let's see. So, this will be very different than the other videos that I have recorded. Um, only because um, I think that I am going to talk about a few things um, that are totally different. Um, not only because I believe that um, the world has changed quite a bit in um, the last several weeks. Um, the good thing is that, you know, <sighs> what is the good thing? <laughs> um, that we are trying to keep sane in an insane world um, and trying to breathe and stay calm, right? Um, you know, the funny thing is that when I posted my first video, I did it because I couldn't find any information, like I said, and several videos later, I have contacted or been contacted by several people and it has warmed my heart to no ends and that's a good thing um, and you know it makes me just feel special in a way that um, I am helping others, you know, reach out and um, ask the right questions, you know, because sometimes um, those questions are very important, especially when you're talking to doctors, because sometimes some doctors um, assume we don't know the information that we need to ask. Um, and so therefore, they just assume that we have no knowledge. But um, in the end, it's about what we need to do for ourselves, for our well-being. Um, and therefore, you know, we take it day by day. And in this time frame, it's actually um, <laughs> moment by moment. Um, as you can tell, I have shaved. <laughs> um, and believe it or not, this time around, I did it at two in the morning I I couldn't I couldn't deal with it I the pain was too much um, I the shots are helping they try to um, you know alleviate some of the pain uh, alongside with the medication that I take um, it's not a hundred percent you know but what is um, the doctor has already told me that he wants to um, change the injections to another medication. And so we're just waiting for the insurance to go approve of it. Um, so we'll see. The other thing that has changed is that my eyesight has been um, getting worse. And so... That's another thing that has been messing up. Um, besides my speech. <laughs> but, you know, again, I just take it as... <laughs> as a, a, it's gonna, you know, it's, a, it's affecting me. Okay, let's go on, move on. <laughs> um, so I think that's all I'm gonna talk about that as far as my condition. Um, like I said, I wasn't going to talk about it um, throughout the whole video. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about, uh, how the COVID-19 is um, affecting us all, uh, people with disability, um, especially, um, because what happens is that it affects especially when you have um, panic and anxiety disorders, it actually revs it up more. And so it, it really 
um, you don't know it's going to affect you how um, or how badly it is until you actually see or in witness how what's going on in the, you know in your area. Um, when we first went out and we were going to go and uh, to CVS, you know, and um, get my medications as well as my wife's medications. Um, and there was literally, not kid you, no toilet paper, no wipes, no, you know, it, it's, it's crazy. It is so crazy. Um, and um, I went in with a mask and gloves and at first um, it didn't affect me because I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And when I went in and I saw it, um, I was like, okay, you know, got my medication. I walked out. I, um, I went to, um, I don't know where else we went that day and went back home. Traffic was very, you know, somewhat lighter than usual, way lighter than usual. And um, then afterwards, you know, we went home. And when we went home, I called my doctor. I don't remember. I needed to speak to her and I broke down. I broke down and I started crying and I was having a very severe panic attack and my anxiety went to the roof. And it was the scariest thing ever. And I remember that I, I realized how bad it was, you know. Um, and that's when you realize that the enormity of it was just hitting barely. It wasn't, you know, the what is happening now where they tell you not to go out. And I remember that I, I just, you know, I started thinking of my, you know, the kids and their jobs require them to work, you know, and they're not stopping from working. Um, it's that kind of job, you know, and then you start thinking that, that you're praying and you're hoping that they're safe and they're that, you know, they're using protective gear and that, you know, and you, that's all you can do as a parent. And you're talking to your friends and, you know, and it, it's all about just hoping that everyone is okay. And then you start to wonder, you know, all these things and you start to think and you start to have all these thoughts and it affects you and it affects your health. And then, you know, it, in my case, it, you know, it, it's three times worse for me because my, my emotions are what hurt me. And so I have to literally have to be very, very, very gentle with myself. And I have to make sure that I'm doing something to not think about it. So we started playing cards like um, Rummy Q and, no, not Rummy Q, I'm sorry, Gin Rummy and uh, uh, Go Fish and, you know, uh, Dominoes. And then we started watching movies. Um, and um, so, and then I played The Sims, like I have said. So, you know, these things are now three times um, more, you know, uh, more important to me than before. And I'm gardening, you know, my little garden outside, you know, I, I go out there as much as I can. So I'm, I'm doing this constantly and I'm talking to my kids more and FaceTime more um, as much as I, as they can, because I'm here and, you know, they're, they're doing their best, you know, with their families. So little by little, you try to have this constant creative way of 
have a, a continuous schedule because that's how you do it. And I have a, a schedule with my brother who is in Central America um, and he's working from home. So, you know, it's a constant clock. And if you don't have that, you, then you do go into this mode of, of you know, depression. And then you go into a, a mode of a cabin fever, which happens to us. Um, because one thing is to stay at home and not have uh, this, you know, constant reminder that you have to stay at home. Um, and another thing is a constant reminder that you have to stay at home because it's for your well-being. So that's one thing. And, you know, so it's been a very trying experience and a very, very um, new thing for us, you know, and a relationship also is, uh, is a test of it. You know, um, there are good days and there are bad days. You know, um, there have been a lot of reports and a lot of stories of, you know, um, domestic abuse. And that's another thing that, you know, if you don't know your partner, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, girlfriend, um, even roommates, um, then there is a lot of issues if you don't talk, if you don't have communication. And that is, you know, one of those big issues and, and very important issues that, you know, all you have to do is sit down and talk, you know, clear things out, clear the air, because it can become ugly, it can become, you know, explosive. And, you know, the good thing is that we can talk about it, or we can walk away, clear the air, you know, calm it down and then come back and talk about it. You know, our fur babies, let me tell you, they will let us know, you know what, we don't like it and you guys need to chill out and, you know, talk because they, they literally will, you know, show us that something is not right. And, and, uh, and somehow we come out and, and talk and then there's a sense of humor, laughter. Laughter is something that we need, you know, because it does, it, it helps, it, it helps the heart, it helps the soul, you know, laughter, humor, it, it's, <laughs> it's a good thing, <laughs> especially now, it's a good thing, you know, watching comedies, watching romance, watching action, you know, sometimes it's a good thing, you know, and so it helps a lot, um, and, and that's, uh, that's our saving grace sometimes, you know, um, because sometimes you just, yeah, sometimes you want to walk out and then you start thinking, nope, I can't. <laughs> so that's one of the biggest things that I've learned in, in lessons, you know, and then you turn around and you look at them and, and then you remember that why you fell in love with them because they make you smile, they make you laugh, they hug you and they kiss you, you know, and, and they, they don't step those boundaries, you know, though, they don't overstep those boundaries, you know, and thank goodness, you know, I'm not in that type of relationship anymore, so, and uh, I, I'm grateful for that, and I come to my third story, um, I wanted to talk about my coming out. Um, I was in my early 30s, mid-30s. I was married. And, you know, the funny thing about being married and coming out was the fact that I knew I was different from a long time ago, but I was told that I was crazy. And because of that, it took me a bit to come out and fully understand who I truly was you know, at that time. And then when I did finally find out who I truly am, I realized how much I truly love women. And I really, you know, didn't, um, I didn't like men at all in that sense. Um, I don't mind having friends as men and I do have friends as men. Um, and I appreciate them for, what they bring as friends, you know, because they are, they, they're great. They're great as friends, you know, 
Um, but as anything else, uh, no. <laughs> um, you know, my kids are amazing. I love them to bets. I, I'm grateful because I love being a mom and a grandmother. Um, and the funny thing is that I'm one of these people that I, even though I'm doing these videos, I am truly shy, even though my wife would, um, she would not agree to that. <laughs> I'm friendly, you know, um, but I'm, I'm your typical person that if you meet me, then yeah, we'll be friends and everything else, but I would not make the first move. Um, I don't know, maybe people will, you know, not agree with that. Um, but you know, the people that I have dated, um, have been very intelligent women. Um, uh, my first girlfriend was, you know, very smart and, you know, she broke the dam. <laughs> Let's just say that. And from that point forward, I knew who I was and, I haven't turned back, you know, and I'm a full-fledged lesbian. I'm not, you know, gay or any other title or whatever. I I understand about labels and whatever, but I am a lesbian. I am a lesbian. I am married to my wife, um, and I'm very proud of that, you know. And I think that in me saying that out loud and recording it is now fully expressing that and I'm very proud of it and I think that um, I was a little nervous in saying it but I was I'm glad that I am f saying it now um, and I wanted to do that and I wanted to make that um, uh, make this video and saying this um, only because it's been on my mind for so long and I've seen other videos with you know women that were have been married or are married and are coming out and and it is scary and it is scary. It is, it is really, you know, something totally different. And if you don't have the support, it is hard to walk away from it. Um, however, with me, you know, it was a very different time frame, Um, and things didn't work according to how I pictured them. However, that was many years ago. And now I, I can say that even though through the ups and downs, I, I don't regret anything I did. I don't regret meeting the people that I did. I don't regret things that I had have accomplished, um, that I could change a few things maybe. However, you know, my life is full of rich, a uh, richness of memories that, um, have been really incredible. And so for me, it is something beautiful. So it's all I can really, um, accept of myself, except of the people that I have met and I'm richer for it. Um, but I believe that, you know, in the end, you do have to look at yourself in the mirror and actually accept every little thing that you have accomplished and will accomplish um, because you are you have your own faults and you have to accept them because um, not everybody is perfect and your imperfections is what makes you beautiful and for a long time I didn't accept myself you know I thought of myself as the ugliest person in the world and now I look at myself and I'm beautiful. I, I look at myself and I'm like, ah, oh, look, at I'm cute. <laughs> this is the first time I say it out loud and now I'm recording this. So it's on record, right? Um, but it took half my life to say that and I'm proud of it. And that was with the help of my wife, you know, and a lot of other things. And so I can finally say that, you know, I am proud of who I see in the mirror. You know, I'm proud that my grand my granddaughters can see their grandmother and I can say, look, I'm beautiful. Like just, and you're beautiful, just like your grandmother, you know? So it is a road that I continue to walk. Um, it is a road that I have many surprises that have been thrown at me like this illness. 
but I continued to smile. I continued to be positive. I continued to work hard to be positive. Some days are really hard. Some days are really tough. Um, and some days I, you know, are easier than others, but not, but however, I can say that I have a very strong, very incredible, beautiful support system uh, with these beautiful human beings that I love with all my heart. And I don't get tired of saying it, you know. Um, and so therefore, you know, it is something that you you yourself have to... It, I don't like saying have to. However, surround yourself with that. Surround yourself with incredible positive energy that you feel, the love that you feel, you know. It, it's, it's something that you yourself will feel and once you do it helps the healing process you know I have a lot of healing to do still from past trauma that you know maybe one day I will go ahead and put it on video I don't know yet um because I'm still working on putting it on paper <laughs> but at this moment I know that I'm stronger than I was and that I can walk and talk the talk and being positive. Um, so that's the reason why I was able to sit here and, you know, be able to talk about this more so. So in overall with this video, I'm very proud that I have done this. I'm proud that I talked about how this is affecting me, how the COVID um, is affecting us. Um, overall is a relationship overall is my condition the fact that I have talked about my coming out um, and now I'm getting a little tired uh, talking a lot does affect me um, however I'm very proud that I did this I hope that this um, brings a smile to your face you know at least it's not the same story over and over again um, and I hope that you have a great evening or morning, whatever time frame it is, wherever you are. Um, I hope that you are safe, that you're home, that you are being, you know, creative, <laughs> watching movies, uh, playing games, doing, making art, um, you know, doing gaming, um, you know, because again, the only thing you can do is is try to be creative in your own space, um, especially in these times, and just just be gentle with yourself. That's all you really can be, and be gentle with the people around you or your fur babies. Um, and again, if you have any questions, you can always always write to me. Um, and uh, I hope that you know this brings a little, just a little ray of sunshine to your day um, with information and uh, sometimes just a little bit can help but I hope you know you have a blessing night and a blessing day and uh, until later bye